So what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel once again. You know I appreciate having you here. Stick around for today's video. It's all about this, the little but mighty Sinis 125 Terrain. That's right, we're going on a mini adventure on a mini adventure bike. Thank you for sticking around, really appreciate it. And when I said mini adventure bike, I don't mean it's small like a monkey bike. I mean, it's a full on adventure bike, but it's a 125. Now I can't think of any on the market that are in this category where it comes like this. This comes with all the stuff on you need to go on a little bit of an adventure. But today we're gonna find out whether it's up to the challenge. Yes, it is a first impressions ride, it is but it's a little bit different because we're going to hit some dirt and the reason for that is part of the blurb when I was reading the website before I came out was I think they said it, this is probably not word for word but they said it's a bike for when the tarmac ends you can just keep going I might have made that bit up it actually sounds good if it's not that they can use that but you'll have to pay me some kind of advertising anyway that's the name of the game because for me to be an adventure bike it's got to be a do it all it's got to be a swiss army knife it's got to carry on when the road gets a little bit dirty so that's what we're going to do today right so while we're sitting here on this dual carriageway let me get all the pleasantries out of the way thank you very much to sinis down in brighton i shall leave a link to sinis motorcycles down in the descriptions box i shall also leave a link for the specifications and a little web page for this down there as well about myself Come on, you must know it by now. Six foot two, wide in the shoulders, long in the leg. Now, just a little bit over 17 stone. That's right, my friends, we are losing weight. And that's so you know how I get on with the ergonomics and everything like that. <laughs> you can have fun on a 125, people. So go and check out those links once the video's finished, of course. Don't go there now because you will be missing out. Right, so I'm going to be completely honest. This isn't my first ride. It's not. I've had this all week, but I've only commuted on it. I've only done 60 miles and that's been pure commuting. So I'm going to hold my hands up and tell you that now. So this is a first impressions ride on this type of journey and adventure, basically what it was designed to do. But I am glad that I did the commute on it because it showed itself up to be an absolutely fantastic commuter. Boring to watch on video, I know, but trust me, it commutes very, very well. But then again, what 125 doesn't? <laughs> the beauty of this one is it's slightly taller, I think, than a lot of 125s. You've got a nice view out ahead of you, so you can kind of see over the cars, not the big ones, but the normal size cars you can. It's a nice riding position for commuting. I do like it. And what it's given me a chance to do is to get used to the seat. Because when I first got on it, I thought the seat was a little bit strange. I mean, we will come to the ergonomics in a minute. So I'm going to start with the seat. Basically, let's just get on with the ergonomics. It'd be easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> I told you, this is not a professional outfit. I've told you many, many times. Seat to bars to pegs ratio. Pretty good. They are very nice, actually. For this size of bike, it's very, very comfortable. Got to say that. The pegs are a nice kind of height and width. They do the job. Handlebars, very, very nice. Nice width apart. They're very comfortable. The whole triangle is very pleasant. Now, the seat, as I was just trying to explain, is a bit weird. On adventure bikes, I'm kind of used to a flatter seat, so you can shuffle more forward and backwards. This one is kind of a scoop. You've got a scoopy thing going on here. You'll see it in the walk round, but it is kind of a scoop. But now I've got used to it, it's okay. And that's the beauty of doing the first 50 miles before we get to this point, you see. If I'd have just said it when I first got on, I probably wouldn't have talked about this seat too much. But now I've been on it for, what are we on now? 78 miles. I've got this bike on three miles. So we're on 78 miles. I like the seat, it's very comfortable. There's not a lot of wiggle room. I've got to be uh, honest with that. I can't go backwards and forwards too much like a proper off-road kind of big adventure bike. But having said that, it does kind of grip your butt quite nice. It is very, very pleasant. As I say, it took me a little while to get used to it, but now I'm used to it. It sits me in a nice spot. 
and I've only been riding this bike all week. Although it's been short commuting, I haven't touched my other bikes for the simple reason I wanted to just see what it's like living with this bike for a little while. So apologies about kind of being a little bit of a fraud on this one, but a first impression. It's not. It's not a first impression when it comes to ergonomics, but it is a first impression when it comes to mini adventure. All right, so we're gonna go up here, some country lanes. It's a little bit bumpy, national speed limits, but don't worry, we're not really in danger of hitting those too many times. <laughs> this bike's not the quickest I've ever ridden, especially with me on it. Up front here, the clocks are nice and simple to read. We will go through those when we do a walk round. The mirrors, very, very good. They are quite big, but they stick out nice and wide, so you can see behind you no problem at all which is handy if you are commuting because all those delivery bloody riders sneak up on you. There are other food delivery companies available. So the mirrors are nice. The screen is obviously a little bit low for me, but it's just low enough to be nice, if that makes sense. Around here, the air starts hitting me. So if I open the visor, I get it straight in the old mush, but it is pleasant in the fact that there's no buffeting. So it does a good job and it keeps all this bit, keeps the worst of the weather off this bit, which is nice on a little adventure. Now a quick run through of the bike. One is red. <laughs> wow, it's full of educational stuff, this one. You don't get this anywhere else. Uh, tank, 14 litres, I believe. Brake horsepower is around 12.7 brake horsepower. Price of this is under £3,000. And when we do the walk round, I will show you what you get for under £3,000. You will be amazed. Gearbox is a six speed box. Six is more of an overdrive, I'd say. You put it up there, you fight the gearbox to get it up to the speed, and then when you're up to the speed you like, stick it in six and it'll sit there all day long. Come on, you can do it. We're in fourth gear now, 31 miles an hour, 6,000 revs. Oh, he's probably going quicker than me. <laughs> but that's not what this bike's about. This bike is about a slow, chilled out adventure. It's about the vibe. It's about a feeling. It's about exploring. It's not about getting there as quick as you can. Right, wheels are 17 front and rear. So a bit weird it's in the adventure category and not the street category because of the wheel size. For me personally, an adventure bike has to probably have a 19 inch minimum front wheel. But that's just a personal thing. Doesn't mean you can't go on an adventure on something else. I mean, I go on adventures on my Super Cup, so it can be done. But what I'm saying is for it to be kind of in that category, that's, that's my stipulation. But it's only an opinion. You don't have to agree with it. But so far, so good on the road. It handles quite nicely. It's not the fastest bike I've ever ridden, but it is a 125. You don't expect much more. Handling wise, so far, so good. As I said, on the commute, it's perfect. Never let me down. It's quite plush, actually. The suspension front and rear feels quite nice. It's soft, supple, soaks up all the bumps. So on that commute, it is really nice. And on a road like this, which is actually quite bumpy, yeah, it's soaking it up nicely. It doesn't feel out of shape. I mean, I'm not hammering it, but it doesn't feel skitty. It doesn't feel like it's all over the place. It's a nice place to be. Right, brakes. Let's have a little check of the brakes while we're up here. Let me open the visor so I can see. I hope you can still hear me because it's pretty windy with the visor open. But we're going to do brakes. I've got nothing behind me. Well, I can't see. We've got a bit of a bend, so I'm not going to do it. But it's weird because the front brake's good. But the back brake is even better because it's got dual braking, like combined braking. The back brake is astonishingly good for this type of bike. Right, so nothing behind me. 30 miles an hour. I'm just going to pull the clutch in. Roll 25. <laughs> That's front brake. I have to be a little bit careful. I forgot it's got no ABS. So no ABS on the front. <laughs> <laughs> that woke me up. <laughs> yeah, you got to remember, no ABS on the front. <laughs> yeah, I'm a t I know it. Nothing behind me. Going downhill. It's going to be horrible on here because they've just put all, looks like shingle or gravel on it. So it should give it a good test. Right, we're going now. 21 miles an hour. This is back brake only. Nothing behind me. It's, it's really good. Obviously, it gets out of shape a little bit because it's got no ABS. But that means when we go off-road, you don't have to turn it off. Speaking of off-road, let's go and do some. 
Right, let's see if it lives up to its adventure bit. This has no ABS front or rear, it's got dual braking. It's got no trash control. So you don't have to fiddle with any of that when you go off-road. The only thing I'm a little bit nervous about is that dual braking. I'm not sure if the, the back operates the front as well. If it does, not so good for downhill off-road, but we're doing it, we're making it. Second gear. Oh, over the bumps, no problem. Yes, these aren't the most challenging off-road things, I know. So don't get down there in the descriptions box and say you're hardly doing a Dakar, are you? That's not what this bike's about. This bike is about, as they said in the blurb, when the tarmac runs out, can you carry on? And the answer so far, yes. All right, let's stand up. Let's give it a little bit of a stand up. Now, I am tall, as I said, but do you know what? It's actually not bad. Set of bar risers on here and it'd be pretty pleasant. It is slightly too small for me, but the foot pegs, they're quite nice. Standing up is really, really easy. It's a nice light bike. Right, let's go up here. We'll do a walk round up here, but I want to just carry on to a little more of the dusty stuff. Right, so we are still in second gear, just plodding along. Suspension is soaking this up really well. I'm impressed so far. Bearing in mind, this is pretty much on road tyres. You can get more off-road tyres for this, and if you are doing this stuff regularly or aiming to go to a place where these are the roads like this, I would get some more off-road based tyres just in case it gets a little bit muddy. It's okay in the dry, but as soon as it gets muddy, they will slide all over the place. Standing up, the back brake is in a nice position. I know it sounds weird, but if you've never ridden off-road, you know you like that back brake right on the end of your toe, so you can uh, just dab it if you need to. A bit muddy down this bit, I'm not going through the big puddle. Don't worry about that, not on these tyres. Let's go around the edge. <laughs> I don't trust the tyres 100%. Oh, we're going to get a little bit dirty here. It's going to ruin the walk round. But we made it. I don't want to get it too dirty. I want you guys to see it quite clean. But so far, so good. Obviously, haven't dropped the pressures in the tyres at all. So we're running standard road pressures. Haven't touched the suspension. The suspension is exactly how it came out the tin. All right, we're going downhill now. I'm going to sit down for this one. It is quite steep, you won't get this on the GoPro. It is quite steep. And as I said, no ABS, so should be able to lock the back up nicely and keep it under control. Right, so this is a little bit of a test coming up here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but we're going to do it anyway. We're here now, why not? <laughs> right, so this is quite steep downhill. A little bit muddy as well. Should we do it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> going to keep it in first, just cover that back brake. I'm not going to stand up. I'm going to just keep it under control, sitting down. I say under control. I use that term loosely. So we just use first gear, roll down on the engine braking. It's actually got quite good engine braking. And the good thing about this engine is it's pretty smooth. It's got a balancer in it. A balancer shaft, that's the word I was looking for. And it works really well. It smooths it out. Sometimes on little singles, they vibe really badly, but this one doesn't. It's very smooth. Here we go. First little test over. Got to say, that was so easy. Really easy. This bike is so nice and easy to ride off-road. Okay, I admit that. That wasn't the most challenging of routes. But the whole premise of this little video is a first impression. Can it take you anywhere? And I think it can. I've only done a little bit, but I've got to say, it didn't feel squirmy it didn't feel out of control it felt nice and easy the clutch on it is very nice the engine the throttle the way it all works together is very easy off-road it's very easy on road as well but <laughs> you'd expect that oh i was i was a little bit shocked at how easy that was right we've got another little lane up here i'd hardly call it a lane it's been graded so it's basically like someone's gravel drive but we're going to ride up there and then we're going to do the walk round because I did enjoy that little bit of off-road. So we're going to do a little bit more and then we're going to have the walk round. If that's okay with you guys. If it's not, tough. All right, so let's head up here. I'll do this lane. Well, I'll do the walk round, then I'll do this lane. We've just got this first little bit to go. Nice and easy, a little bit gravelly. Kind of what you find in places where actually the tarmac does run out and they do these hard packed kind of roads. Obviously today it's dry, which is nice. A few muddy patches, but not too bad.
lovely though for under three thousand pounds you can get to places like this i mean you can get to places like this on a sports bike if you're willing to risk it but on this it's a no-brainer right let's stick it in the sunshine and then we can do a walk round. So here we are, we're out on a mini adventure. There is no tarmac to be seen here at all. And what do we have? The Sinis Terrain 125 mini adventure bike. Or should I say, it's just an adventure bike. I think it's winning me over. It really is. And it looks really nice. I don't think you can deny that. Leave a comment downstairs in the comment section. Let me know what you think of the look of this bike. And guess what? All this that you see comes on it. That's right, this is under £3,000 for all of this. Comes in two colours, I think. I think it's just this red and then a white one. I'm not sure if there's any other colours. If it does come in another colour, it will be in the descriptions box in the specifications for this bike. I shall leave the link to Sinus' specifications for this down there. So go and check that out once the video is done. You would never think this was a 125 in the flesh. Every time I've told someone, they've gone, what? 125? Get out of here. But no, seriously, it's a 125. So let's have a little bit of a look round, a little bit more in depth. We will start at the front and then work our way round from there. But yeah, this is a nice looking bike, I have to say. It's winning me over. Right, on the front, 17-inch rim, single disc, tyres are 180-17 on the front, and the forks are upside-down forks. I don't know if it's got a radial caliper. Let's have a little look over this side. There you go. Brake on the back there. No ABS on this bike. It runs a combined braking system. So there you go. That's the front, the tyre and the forks. If you come around this side this is all standard you've got these crash bars down the bottom here and they also go up to protect the front radiator here because as you might have seen there it's got a radiator which means yes that's right the cleverer amongst you will know that that means this is now liquid cooled so that's a good upgrade i like that but look at that the engine bars come as standard they are quite wide let's have a look from behind you can see how far they stick out so if you're going in proper deep ruts they might get in the way but for this sort of stuff they're fine and what i found is i either stick my feet in there on there or sometimes i put my legs up here <laughs> and that just gives me a nice combination for my legs basically i'll get the choice of what's that four different positions for my legs because obviously you've got the foot pegs as well which are here they're here they're metal with a rubber topping on which can come off you just kind of i think you just pinch these and push them through and then you've got kind of a little grippy metal off-road type thing under there so if you want to do that that's fine just take those off if you're going off-road and you get a little bit more grip that's the back brake and as i said that's really good i think it works in conjunction with the front and together the stopping power is great again no abs on the back no has it got abs on the back no i just think it's dual it's got that but that locked up pretty bad it's got an abs hoop under there but i don't think it comes with abs so i'm not sure i'll have to do my research i'll have to have a little look at that but when i stood on the back brake and i mean i really stood on it it did lock up so i would assume it's just the dual braking system on that but that little ring under there those little grooves that's confused me a little bit if you come under here you'll see it's got a center stand as well so it's got a side stand and center stand and that's standard as well on the back here this is your rear passenger foot pegs again the rubber bit comes off if you want more grip for off-road sort of stuff although if you're going off-road you're probably not going to go with a pillion and to be fair 
you won't be going very fast with a pillion on this either <laughs> i've got to say that it's not the quickest bike well basically me on it is probably the equivalent of two lighter people <laughs> so you get a good idea if you're smaller what it's like for you and the pillion with me on it it's not going to sit you well to light it's not the quickest but the seat as you can see i talked about this on the way up here it's quite scooped now a lot of adventure bikes are quite flat so you shuffle backwards and forwards but this sits you right in there but it's not uncomfortable once you get used to it it's quite plush this is really really soft and it's only done what 80 miles now so that will bed in even more so that will get nicer right on the back the back tire is a 120 80 17 single disc we just went through that and a chain driven which you can see just around there you will see that in depth when i go around the other side up here you've got the panniers the side panniers these come as standard as i said and these also have a little crash bar in front of them just to protect them so yeah that's a nice little touch just gives them a little bit of added protection around there if it does go over i wouldn't suggest dropping your bike at every opportunity but if it does go over this bike has a hell of a lot of protection right so around the back you've got the back box you can get a bigger one of these i believe this is the standard one i think it's the standard one and i think you can get a bigger one if you so desire as an optional extra but for under your three grand this is what you get you've got a nice exhaust there it does look good actually it's all round a really really good looking bike this and then obviously your number plates another box you can see where the box is that one's solid and that one's cut out where the exhaust is so it's well thought out so you've got even distribution on the back <laughs> that's a long word for me even right down this side chain drive and you've got your side stand as i said it's got side stand and center stand which is handy on any bike claiming to be an adventure bike it's always handy to have a center stand so you can fix the back wheel on the go or the front or just jack it up and do whatever you want with it even my many thousands of pounds of africa twin i've got to pay extra for a center stand but not on this people not on this here you have the gear shift it's a nice easy gear shift to use it's a six speed i've hit no false neutrals and had no problems using it and it hits neutral nice as well some gearboxes i struggle to find neutral but not on this one right so let's have a quick look at the luggage it's the same key as the ignition you just pull these little flaps here turn the key and it's open i've got a few bits in the back for filming and uh, for commuting punch a repair kit that's actually a tail pack and uh, disc lock i don't know why i'm showing you stuff in the back box but that's what you got in the back box it's quite handy as i said i've used this all week commuting and shopping wise it's got in here quite a surprising amount and on the side boxes here they open up and they come with this bungee net as well and again i've had loads of stuff in here i went shopping the other day and i just filled it up with bags and bags of stuff and this bungee net is really handy it stops everything falling out it's not the toughest case you'll ever get and then on this side again it's not as much room in here it's basically this little bit here and then you can use some storage up there a little side bit there but not too much because the exhaust is behind here but again even that little bit there is quite handy remember this is a bike that costs under three thousand pounds and you get all that i know people that have spent more on their luggage than they have on this whole bike <laughs> so that just goes to show the kind of bargain you're going to get adventure is a state of mind not a state of pocket right on the front the lights you've got a standard bulb in the middle you've got drl lights around the outside which i think you can see on the video hopefully and then you've got led indicators right round the back you've got led strips as you can see i'm not sure if the actual brake light is a bulb but on the side there the indicator is there led as well to get into the tank just the standard key from the ignition and the whole thing comes off and inside there's no little hole to differentiate between diesel and unleaded so be aware of that not really a problem but just be aware of it and to put it back on just click it down and there you go that's done under here you've got the key for the seat so a little click there that comes off nice and easy no real room for anything under there but do you really need it no because you've got all these panniers you see but that's just a little look under the seat for you guys and very very easy to put back on just clicks nicely back in place again my africa twin could learn from this my africa twin seat is one of the hardest seats i've ever put on in my life right so running through the controls on the left hand side you've got clutch which is nice and light non-adjustable here you've got hazard lights that don't seem to work when the engine's off do they no <laughs> that's strange 
so your hazard lights don't work with the engine off let me just turn it on <laughs> I don't know what they do <laughs> their light no at the back no I don't know what that does someone will have to tell me it doesn't seem to do anything but anyway let's get back onto the left hand bar as we were saying clutch nice and easy very light non-adjustable on the back here you've got your push to pass a flasher light and then here you've got your lights control so full beams and then standard indicators are here just one system push to cancel then underneath here is your hooter or your horn or whatever you want to call it today over this side front brake throttle kill switch and then down here you've got your starter and then that's it for this side again this front brake is non-adjustable So you go that's the dash lcd blue lights with a black letter combination right over here you've got your rev counter then this side you've got your fuel gauge then up here neutral light indicators left and right your little set and mode button there's your screen and here you've got a usb charger which is nice all bikes should come with those so that's very handy down here engine warning light right so in here this is quite hard to see i can't get my hand in front of it because it defocuses there's not a lot going on down here you've got your trip meter and your mileage and then up here you've got your clock and then over here you've got your speedo and then up in this corner that's not on at the moment you've got a gear indicator and that's about it but i found if you press this and hold it it changes it to orange so if you want orange you can have orange but if you want blue you can have blue i'm not sure the light's actually on or off whether the blue is a light and then when you turn it off orange is the natural background but i'll hold it again and there we go blue that's a little bit different that's the only thing i could figure out that select does mode it basically goes down to here trip and then if i press mode again it's back to the normal miles so we've done 84 miles and on this trip we've done 81 miles that's the only information you get so that's about it for the dash any questions drop them downstairs in the comment section but i'm impressed so far with this bike i really am i'm liking it i'm enjoying it it's slow but i get to see the countryside don't worry about the gopro there it's not staying there <laughs> i just put it there to get it out of the way but yeah so far so good Sinis, you're doing a good job. Right, so let's carry on with this little mini adventure. A bit more of this dusty dirt kind of fire track road type of thing. I wouldn't call it pure off-roading, we know that. I don't want to offend you in the comment sections. But we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Just going to have a play, muck around. As I said, 17-inch wheels, road tyres. Not the greatest combination, but it's holding its own. It really is holding its own. We are doing well. Suspension's soaking up all the little imperfections really, really nicely. Down into third, we've got a little bit of sand now. So I've got to be a bit more careful. Sit back on the seat, constant throttle, and just glide over the sand. It's doing really, really well. It really is. I'm getting more and more impressed by this little thing the more I ride it. I would change the tyres, I'd put something a little bit more adventure on here, a little bit more grippy in these circumstances, but these tyres it comes with are not doing too bad. As I said before, we haven't reduced any pressures, these are standard road pressures, so if you drop the pressures you get a little bit more grip, but we're not doing that for this one, we're just pooling along, having some fun. Oh dear. Drop it down. Oh, we are skating. <laughs> and then into the gravel. Very impressed. This is astounding. This is fantastic. I'm loving this. It's brilliant. Just cruising along. We are having an adventure. Would I do more than this? Not with these tyres, no. I would attempt more with this if I had the proper tyres because I think it can handle worse conditions than this but you got to remember 17 inch wheels and these engine crash bar things while they're good they're not so good for the UK green lane because we get big big ruts and if it's very rutty they stick out quite wide 
so you might catch them you might not you probably won't but just something to be aware of and this is what i was saying about putting my feet there i can put my feet either there i can put my feet on there or if i'm really chilled out i just rest my legs up there <laughs> fantastic and that makes it great for an adventure as well for long touring because the more positions you can get into the less likely you are to cramp up and be uncomfortable so in that sense in the touring sense of distance and time in the saddle that works very very well brilliant don't be afraid to get out people and explore do not be afraid doesn't matter what bike you have you can get out and explore anything 50 cc upwards you can go out and explore it's not difficult you just have to get into the mindset definitely not ABS on the back <laughs> so I don't know why it's got an ABS ring obviously that's something to do with dual braking but I've only ever seen those little indentations on ABS bikes another little bumpy off-road section here Let's stand up for this one this will test the front suspension fantastic absolutely fantastic i could feel it was at the limit of its suspension then but yeah it's a budget bike but man is it fun 100 percent, it is yeah it really is right let's do a little bit of road mileage on to the next little lane right engine wise if you change up around 5,000 it's nice there's a little bit of a dead spot between five and seven thousand revs that's in most gears if you really want to rag it then you get it right up above seven thousand it kind of pulls a little bit but most of its pull seems to be low down so short shifting for me is the way to go i kind of short shift up to fifth then rev it out a little bit and then in six i'll sit in that and it's kind of an overdrive we're at 45 miles an hour now six and a half thousand revs sixth gear and it's nice with that balancer shaft it is really really smooth for a single cylinder it's fantastically smooth and it will sit here 40 to 50 miles an hour cruising all day long now seeing as i was looking at the rev counter the only thing about this dashboard that has not annoyed me but has caught me out a few times is i don't know if you can see that is the little petrol symbol there which is yellow now on every car and bike i've ever owned when you run out of fuel it lights up yellow but this one's painted yellow as standard so every now and again it catches me out i look down and think oh and then i realize i'm not running out of fuel it's just painted yellow but if you do own the bike you'll soon get used to it it's wonderful on these a roads say so this is a 40 mile an hour road nice and sweepy tarmac is in good condition and it holds the road really really nicely it's a nice dry day i can't tell you what these tires are like in the wet it did rain in the week when i was commuting but i was only commuting so not pushing them but at the moment i can't really fault the bike obviously it's built down to a budget all the fit and finish is a little bit cheaper than you will get on a premium bike but you are getting a hell of a lot of bike for under three thousand pounds so if you do want to get out there an adventure i don't know what that means can you adventure go out on an adventure i'll learn to speak in a minute so if you do want to go out on an adventure then this bike will be fantastic get it out of your head that you need to go really really fast stick to these type of roads and you can't go far wrong it's a nice comfortable chilled out relaxed place to be i'm not 100 percent sure what it'd be like if you fully load it up with luggage especially with me on it as i said 17 stone or just over once you put all the luggage on there obviously it's going to slow it down a little bit because at the end of the day it is a 125 engine 12.7 brake horsepower you're never going to get away from that I'm going to get in early with this bit when i said at the beginning is it an adventure bike can it carry on when the road stops yes i think we proved that today 
I don't think we proved it in the essence is it's going to cross the desert. I don't think it's a Dakar qualifying bike, but you know what I mean. I like a bike that you don't kind of get stuck on. That if you get somewhere and the road gets a little bit gravelly like that, you just carry on. I don't like to be stopped by road conditions. If it's a little bit flooded, can I go through it? I'll have a go. If it's a little bit muddy, can I go through it? I'll have a go. Is it a little bit snowy? Can I get through it? Guess what? No chance I'm not having a go at that. It's too cold. I don't like the cold. You thought I was going to say I'll have a go, didn't you? <laughs> I would if I had the right tyres. I do love a slow bike in the English countryside. You get to see so much. You can just browse and just cruise and look around on a fast bike. You just miss all this. You miss all the old pubs, the history, the little things going on, the village fates. You just blast through and you never see them. On a slow bike, on a slow tour, on a slow adventure, you get all of that. Good thing about these gears as well, it's like you can stick it in fifth, we're now at 30. I stick it in fifth, you're sitting at 5,000 revs. You accelerate, not a lot happens, I've got to be honest, it's not going to break your neck. But you can really sort of like ride the top two gears in virtually from 20 miles an hour up. So you're not always searching for a gear. So it's relaxing in that sense as well. Right, the top speed I've got out of the bike so far, when I first got it, I couldn't get more than 57 miles an hour. As it's loosened up, I've now got 62 out of it on the flat. So hopefully over the next period of time, as it loosens up, I don't want to absolutely annihilate the engine, but we will open her up from time to time. She is getting faster, it is getting a little bit looser. But I'd say nice, comfortable cruising speed to 45 to 50. So yeah, absolutely lovely this bike. I really am enjoying it cruises nicely on the tarmac and it cruises quite nicely on the dirt as well handling wise it's not actually too bad it feels a little bit light on the front end but i think that's more down to the tires of me getting used to it it doesn't feel like it's going all over the place it doesn't connect with me as much as i'd like it to connect it doesn't do anything horrendous this doesn't scare the life out of me just i like a little bit more feeling from the front end and so far i haven't got that Give it a little bit more time and I'll probably adjust to that. But for everyday cruising and not pushing the front end into corners, there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It's just when I push it, it lacks just a little bit of feeling. But as I said, that could be the tyres. Swap over the tyres, put some stickier tyres on there and that feeling may come back. We've got one more little lane to go up and then I'm going to grab myself a coffee. Now I wasn't going to do this lane, but this kind of says how confident I am feeling on this bike that I'm going to do another lane up to get a coffee when I was planning on riding this on a couple of kind of dusty roads but nothing more for those of you that like a wall there you go a nice wall I know people moan if I don't put a wall in the video so there's another wall this one's a, not a brick wall it's a stone wall right so here we go this is the last little lane up to where I'm going to grab a coffee change the batteries hopefully they'll last till we get up there and then I'll ride pure tarmac on the way home. This is the last of the little off-road adventures. I wasn't actually going to ride up this one. I was going to ride pure tarmac all the way up. But I've kind of got the feel of this bike now. And I, I want to do adventures on it. It makes me want to go out there and do stuff. And that can't be a bad thing, can it? Sorry, it's a little bit bumpy here. That's when my voice is all over the place. But this one's uphill. Got a few ruts, but again, nothing spectacular. In the wet, this is awful. But in the dry, it should be okay. Might have to stand up for this bit. What are we in? Third gear, plodding along. I wasn't actually going to do this lane, but I'm enjoying this bike so much today that I thought, why not? Let's go and grab a coffee. Let's do some more dirt. It's handling it really well. It's taking it all in its stride. Let's just drop it down a gear. Got to be careful. Okay, someone's coming around the bend. It would do these kind of things all day long. No problem whatsoever. Take it all in its stride. I'm so impressed with this thing. I really am. You've got to work the gears a little bit when you're going uphill. I've got to say that. You have. You find yourself dropping down just to give yourself a little bit more shove to get over the trickier bits. But on the whole, it's really easy. The gearbox is nice and easy to use as well. 
and the clutch is nice and light so very very simple a bit like myself i don't think there's such thing as a bad bike anymore i really don't only time will tell uh, what this is like but it seems pretty simple it seems like it will be simple to work on which again makes it perfect for touring perfect for adventures if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere can you fix it with just a tool kit and because it's got no fancy gizmos on it you probably can it's probably quite easy to get on with tubeless tires so just plug and play that's not a problem engine seems pretty straightforward liquid cooled 125 single cylinder really smooth with this balancer shaft i think i've mentioned that sitting here now 48 miles an hour 7,000 revs sixth gear 50 miles an hour really smooth i've got to say around the 60 mile an hour mark the foot pegs get a little bit buzzy they're not too bad but you can just feel it through your feet handlebar wise you don't feel it too much at all you feel it more if you kind of put your heels onto the foot pegs than the balls of your feet if that makes sense i don't know if anyone rides with the heels but <laughs> i just thought i'd put that out there bit of useless information i know some of you are saying we've had a whole video of that those of you that have been to the channel before will recognize this little lane i quite like it it tests the suspension it's quite bumpy it's out the way it's small it's, it's not technical but it's a little bit of fun to end the day on yeah she's not a rocket ship that's for sure <laughs> still fun though gotta say it's still quite fun handling the bumps really well it's soaking them up nicely so I'm putting it out of its comfort zone a little bit now it's not exactly designed for this it's designed for a little bit of an adventure cruising around seeing the sights a little bit of dirt involved it's not a scratcher but we're having a go the thing is with 125s it's all about momentum you've got to keep the momentum up if you don't you're bogged down on the uphill bits or some of the bends really got to fight the gearbox but if you can keep the momentum up then you're doing all right all bad great way to end the day we've had a little bit of an adventure today so i suppose that sums up this bike can it do an adventure is it an adventure bike is it a legitimate adventure bike and i've got to say first impressions it is it really is it's done everything i've thrown at it today okay we weren't in the extremes but when the tarmac stops can you keep going yes you can it's fantastic as long as you're not in a rush for under three thousand pounds for all of this amazing so once again thank you to cities motorcycles i shall leave the link to their website downstairs and also the link to this bike downstairs as well in the descriptions box so go and check that out don't forget to follow me on instagram twitter and facebook for more for more of what well, i don't know for just more basically if you want more there will be some more is that clear but most of all on this don't forget to subscribe to like to share do all those things that you need to do also hit that notification bell so you guys can get the drop on these videos i shall see you guys on the next one you know i love you all stay safe fish out get all your bags get out my house i don't want your stuff around i never did you wrong but you did me wrong so go ahead get go, gone, get gone. Get all your bags, get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead and get gone